Hey everybody, um, hope everybody's having a good day. Today is Thursday, a reminder to myself. Um, so today I'm going to be doing uh, more single leg exercises. Super important, um, you know, especially if you're a runner, even if you're on a walking program, um, but definitely runner, um, more active like sport type activity. You know, think about running, it's a form of single leg stance over and over and over and over again. And there's obviously a little bit more force control that's needed with running, especially depending on how fast you are compared to walking. So there's more load there. So let's say that you have an inefficient pattern. You're having breakdown with every step or what can happen is you, know, you start out okay with your warm up, beginning of your run, and then you start to run maybe more than what you had been running. And then there starts to be a breakdown. So then it's repetitive, inefficient movement over and over and over again. So the importance of single leg strengthening is making sure one, that you're doing it correctly. Um, and you're trying to, again, retrain your body, what, you know, that feel of that alignment should be, um, so that there's carryover. And then really you're, you're building strength so that you're able, along with your running, so you're getting endurance from your running, you're getting strength from some of the, the uh, single leg exercises. Then you get hopefully the carryover into your running so that you're a more efficient runner. Um, this is a long can be a long conversation in terms of where to put these exercises in your program. Nonetheless, they are important to um, understand and understand form. And I would say if you have a mirror, something that or or videotape yourself, um, always a good way too. Like you know, do an exercise, video to see what you're what you look like. Oh, my knees dropping in. I'm opening up. You know, something's off there. So I need to keep my knee out. Obviously, if, if you have a mirror, it's real time, so you can see yourself, make the correction, and then do the exercise. And then what you're doing when you're seeing yourself is, okay, this is this looks good. What does this feel like to my body? And then remember that, so that it kind of you're again setting, um, you're sending the right signals to the right areas, and you're having your body remember what that actually feels like. All right, so little warm up here, like I always say. Take a longer warm up if you need to. Definitely important for the warm up. Um, you know, 10 to 15 minutes if you have the time. If not, you're always starting. Um, and I'll, uh, that's what I'm going to try to do with this workout is, you know, start with some warm up exercises before we get into some of the harder ones, and then come back down. So as always, kind of jog in place, or you can walk. I've kind of been already up and moving around, so. So that a lot of times what happens is with these single leg exercises a breakdown and you start to use IT band, adductor, hip flexor areas too much. Um, your body starts to rely on them too much because they're, you know, alignments off. They're a better chance to function with the align that amount of alignment. So we're trying to maintain good alignment, activate some of your more power muscles, glute med, definitely, glute max, make sure they're helping out. And, and you should become more powerful because now you have more power coming from these muscles and more muscles working to, to produce the movement. Um, I'm gonna have to do side steps. So you can do this without the band to kind of keep warming up or with the band. So we've done these before, core is engaged. Do up and back four times. Knees over top of your ankles. Again, don't let your knees drop in and don't let your feet rotate out. Both are compensatory, contribute to <clears throat> toes are out. Piriformis a lot of times tends to do too much work um, and can become an issue if it does. And then obviously if your knees are dropping in, it's more that adductor, hip flexor, um, can get some stress at the medial aspect of your knee because of the, the alignment there. Let's do one more lap. Core's engaged, not arching your back. And if you're doing it correctly, you should feel it side of your glutes there. So um, I'm going to do another warm up type exercise. So core is engaged. We're going to do stepping back again for glutes, set back, come back up bands to make this easier. You can put it above your knees, step back, come back up. And you're focusing on use of pushing off using that glute. And then this leg, you're really core glute to help bring you back up again. So you're getting core glute um, activation there and not just kind of hanging out on the front of that hip there. So your alignment changes where your, where your 
um, you know, um, the alignment affects how the muscles function. So if you're here and forward, it's easier for these muscles to then function. If your alignment is back through here, your center of gravity, it's easier for these muscles to help out. So really, really important. So let's do 10 to each side. Core is engaged, step back, push off, step back, push off. Two, three, four, five. So no weight here, just the band for a little resistance. Call this five on each side. Five, six, six, seven, seven. And then remember this front foot, I kind of turn and give myself a better advantage. Not totally out can affect your hip and your back. So eight, eight, Nine, nine, ten, ten. All right, and then we're gonna go and do another single leg exercise, keep the band on. Uh, the lower the band, harder the exercise. Higher the band, easier the exercise. Don't want it over center of your knee. Um, patella, bony prominence, and then patellar tendon, quad tendon right there. So you don't want that band rubbing on there, can irritate the area. So above or below, lower the band, harder the exercise. So core is engaged, not arching your back, keeping control through here. And the entire time of this stance leg, core is engaged, thinking about activating the glute on that side. The movement here should activate glute a little bit more um, on the stance leg, but you're also activated on the moving leg also. As you're moving that band, don't let everything break down. You wanna keep that alignment. So keep strong in that form, knee over top of your ankle. Don't let the foot rotate out. Body tries to help itself out. A lot of times moving that foot up, your body feels like it's getting more stability. So again, look at your alignment. You want everything straight forward. Especially if you're running, your foot moves out. You're not getting that called dorsiflexion at the ankle that you would need. It can contribute to problems all the way up the chain. So again, promoting good, good alignment here. So core is engaged. Do. One. And if you need to, back your couch, a stable object, you know, kitchen counter, that kind of a thing. I would, I always tell people, I'd rather you use some tactile support to do it correctly versus do it wrong. And then your body really is not sure what it's supposed to be doing. Do it correctly, get the form down, build some of that, you know, uh, correct control and then add, you know, um, more resistance, that kind of thing um, to get more strength out of it once you've built that foundation. So, one, two, three. Same thing with this back leg, don't let the toes rotate out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I do these things every day. You know, I need to do them also. So that's why I love doing this. See what it feels like and then put it out there. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we're gonna go back to those step backs. So again, doing it correctly, you should feel it this side here. You don't wanna feel too down, like an IT band down by the knees, something form wise is all. If you're, again, if your body's too far forward, more of that weight is this way, go down, towards the knee, try to shift your weight back onto that heel to get that glute to get, give it a better advantage to fire. All right, so step backs, 10 on each side, core's engaged. One, two, three, four, five. The count's gonna be 20 here, so count all three. So six, seven, eight, Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Then we'll go back to those. Balance exercise again. 
take more of a break as you need to. All right, core's engaged. Knees over top. One, two, three, four. Try not to let your body lean either. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This leg is also going out and back on a diagonal to try and get um, this glute need to. Sometimes, I mean, not sometimes, a lot of times the body tends to overcompensate with this TFL, which can become faulty and then contribute to, again, IT band TFL issues, um, discomfort on the outside of the hip, knee, that, that kind of thing. So we're going back on a diagonal, get this glute need to fire. A lot of times going straight back, you have to be careful that you're not arching your back too. That's why I'm doing this with the diagonal today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Next, we're going to do um, single leg RDLs with backward lunge to single leg stance. So uh, backward lunge kind of open up the hip flexor. So a lot of times, you know, I feel like a lot of single leg stance, you're just standing here. It's, it, things do start to get tired. You start to get tight. So Kind of open it up with the lunge, still getting the single leg control here, and then obviously single leg, again, power coming up. The idea behind this, you can also do it stepping up, coming up into that single leg stance um, as well for another set, single leg exercise. All right, so we'll do the RDL first, so that, because we're hinging forward, still getting glute coming back up, but then the lunge, if something got lost, we'll try to help to open it back up. Structure of your program, again, is really important, because if you're doing the right exercise, and if you're Structure is kind of a joke with me because when I was in the clinic, it's like, can I do this now? It's like, Ugh. you know, in my brain, no, no, I don't like that there. We need to flip this or we're going to save that for later or do this now and then that afterwards. Um, again, something gets lost, then you're correcting it right away. All right, 10 on each side, then we'll do the backwards lunge. So core's engaged, hinging forward, no weight if you, um, if you're, this is hard to do. So if balance is off, I would have people do it next to all the time, basically. So, um, hinging forward and then coming back up. So again, your focus here is you're creating a foundation of correct movement pattern, then adding the weight once that correct form is there. I'll be doing it with the weight. Do it with, you know, um, again, where you have space, something that's stable. I have people slide their hand as they're doing it. So your back doesn't get jammed up. If you kind of keep your hand here, you might be getting jammed up. So you want the movement to kind of go with you. All right, weight in the side of the leg that's going behind. Another joke that, you know, what hand is the weight going in? So weight is in the side that the leg is moving upward. So core's engaged, slight bend in your stance, leg knees over top of your ankle, only going as low as you can go to control. One, should feel this in the back here. Two, and then glute core as you come up. Finish that extension as always. Three. Find a spot, helps with balance. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Then other side. So I was definitely feeling glute. Um, there. So that's where you want to feel it. You don't want to feel it in groin, front of the hip area. If you do, shorten up your range and see if that helps. Take the weight out if you're using a weight. Always backtrack. If you're feeling the wrong area, backtrack. Make the weight exercise easier to see if you get in the right area. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the other thing is I said backtrack. What also happens is sometimes you need feedback. So sometimes the weight can be helpful. So that's where playing with it. Um, you're probably like, what? Weight makes it helpful. It, your body gets used to doing something, so it needs that extra feedback to then force, I don't want to say force fire, but kind of, those correct muscles, because they muscles need to kick in to help out with that weight. 
So the weight can be helpful, but that's where, you know, you're listening to your body and kind of see what, what's working for you. All right. We'll use one weight for these. You can use two, a little bit more strength. This, the, so the weight is on the leg that's stepping back. The reason the weight pulled you this way, which challenges this glute knee to stabilize your pelvis. All right. So same principles here. Knees over top of your ankle. You're not, if you're in this position, stepping back, you're correcting it before you're coming all the way up. And then when you come up, you're exploding, coming up, acting glute. I had this conversation a lot in terms of efficient movement. You told me not to go too fast. You don't want to go too fast, but you want to move efficiently. If you're too slow, there can be a lag and then it's more time that the wrong muscles can kick in. So on that content, you're coming up, you're being efficient so that glute can help to fire, especially for myself. I've fallen into like this pattern where, you know, things have gotten fatigued from things that I've done forever, hip flexor, IT band. So I have to like override those areas because they're wanting to work because they're, they're used to it. So I'm overriding that, getting those glutes to fire again, retraining that so that Again, I'm retraining the right muscles to recruit at the right time. So core is engaged. Core, glutes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Um, my pure form on my left side tends to be a little, well, is a little bit more restricted than the right side. So I noticed when I was doing these videos, again, me watching myself, my knee, and this happens a lot in the clinic too. Uh, you know, you fix your knee, but then your pelvis compensates and your knee goes out on the opposite side, which then puts stress again, back on pure form. So the body's a little bit tricky. Don't even realize that it's happening. You want to make sure that knee's coming straight forward and not rotating out. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Way down. Come here, we're do another set of those. to those RDLs. So core is engaged. Should open this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, and then other side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we got the lunges. Take a break as you need to. Stop it if you need more of a break. Also, roll out if you feel like, well, I use something a little bit too much. Roll out right away. Stretch your quads if you're feeling it too much on the front. Right away again, so you're flushing it out so it's not hanging around. One. Two, again, weights back through that heel. Too far forward, more of that stress is anterior to the knee in that quad. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Watch that your weights aren't behind you. Not good when you step on them. One. That one's a good one. Two. A lot of times the first couple may not be good until your body feels what it's supposed to be doing. Three. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now that we're going to do a single leg squat, you can do this off the side of the step too. Um, I'm not super great at these, partially because my mobility is not good at my ankles. Um, so again, always have people do it where you're um, getting some of that support as you need to maintain good form. Not that you're holding on to it, but you're getting some tactile, even just from your fingertips, it goes a long way. Um, again, work the foundation of the form before you add too much movement, add weight, that kind of a thing. I'm going to show it this way, um, just so you can see. So core is engaged. Again, you can do this off the side of a step. One, weights back. A lot of times what happens if we have people do a single leg squat is this. And again, if you're running, playing a sport, and you're running like this, you're loading up a compensatory pattern which over time contributes to repetitive stress and can increase the risk of injury. So you're retra retraining that movement pattern. All the same as before, so we just said about exploding up, making sure you're getting the right muscle. So it's exploding, but it's efficient. So you're not jamming everything. You're just efficiently coming all up, not going down and then too slow on the way back up. So the other thing is you're only going as low as you can control. So lots of times people try to find more movement and this kind of thing happens. Um, don't do that. Um, again, you want to retrain proper form and then add the range and weight as you have that foundation. So one, two, three, four, five. You can also let your heel come down too. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten on the other side. One, two, three, four, my ankles are so, so dorsiflexion, obviously another really, really important thing that work on with people because the lack of that can affect function the whole way up, which definitely is part of a problem for me. We'll call that six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to show you another way to do this. So want a stable surface or, or a chair. Um, just make sure the chair doesn't have wheels on it. it. Put the back of it against the wall so that it's not moving. Again, stable surface. So core is engaged, coming up, driving up core, glutes here. Again, really important to be efficient with this movement. If you're too slow here, you're going to be getting it through here. I would a lot of times put, let's see, I can pull it over here. Make it higher. So you can make it easier by making it higher. So I'm definitely a lot better there just because I gave myself a little bit more of an advantage. Um, so you, again, make it easier, get the form foundation correct, then make it harder as, you're, as that's there. So one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I also made this easier by keeping my heel opposite heel down. You lift that up as it gets easier. A lot of times I would have people. Um, if there was something stable again to hold on to, we had the end of a 
it looks well at the time, but so it was stable, it was in the right spot. Just again, a little feedback to help pull up. Heel can also work too, or you know, set um, something up on the side of you that you have a little bit of that feedback to help out. 10 on the other side. One, again, the, the goal is to correct form. You will see that dorsiflexion is, we're at a different angle, so it may not affect you as much as when you're in this position, you need a little bit more of that dorsiflexion to help out that squat. So changing the range also makes a difference. We'll go over some, I'll put in um, another calf mobility and then another uh, dorsiflexion stretch also, just to um, kind of help support some of these movements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we did 10 in the single leg standing up, 10 sitting down. Um, you can do you know, whatever's available to you. They, they work the ankle a little bit differently. Um, we'll do a second round of five of each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I did 10, sorry. So do five to 10. One, two, three, four. I feel like my door selection got better even just after that first set, which can happen if you warm it up a little bit. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. I'll do five of these. One, you gotta squeeze the glute at the top there. Two, Control it on your way back down into the seat. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then way you can look at your dorsiflexion is going to a high kneel, um, heels down, hips are straight forward and you're lunging forward. This time you are letting your knee go forward because you're seeing where your dorsiflexion is at, at the ankle. You can get a mirror, compare sides. You, get, you also may get a little bit of a hip flexor stretch on the opposite side. You can bring your arm up and make that hip flexor stretch a little bit more. So you're gonna lean forward, hold for 10. You can also have somebody hold a band. I don't know if Dean can come out here and help me for a second. Are you able to, Dean? What? Just do like that dorsiflexion move with the uh, strap. Can you find the strap? I have the band here you can use. So would be behind you. <laughs> You're putting it just above the ankle and they're just, you know, they're not pulling as hard as they can. They're just giving some support so that you're stabilizing the front of the ankle to be, and you're kind of moving again, same thing going forward, hold for 10, knees right over top. So don't let the knee drop in. All right, we'll do two more. Yeah, this ankle is definitely more, for me, more stiff than the other one. They're both stiff. Two ankle surgeries on this side, so history definitely can make a difference. Okay, good. But you can see it gets better as you keep going. Um, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. He couldn't wait to help out. Um, so that's one dorsiflexion, uh, mob kind of stretch. Feel the difference between sides of the ankle. I could also feel the difference in my hips. Um, when I do it on my left side, the ankle mobility feels better, but my hip feels a little bit more impinged. So when I opposite, did the opposite, work the ankle move by doing what Dean was helping with the band. Again, also add that hip flexor stretch in. I, I can feel stretch through here, kind of open up the front of the hip back up. Really, really important to do that. Um, 
One more thing I'm doing uh, single leg is a split squat. Again, this is partially because it's single leg stability, um, but also opening up hip flexor. So again, foot position on something stable. You do not want it to move on you. So I'm propping this up against here. Um, I already tried this so that it is stable. If you feel uncomfortable doing it right away, something's off, you need to change it. Okay, so core's engaged, pulling back at your pelvis, knees right over top of the ankle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you can compare sides to which side feels more tight. Really sitting back on this front heel, so it's definitely tight across the front here. Weights back through that front heel, knee over top of your ankle. Two, three, four, five. You're only going as low as your mobility allows and your, your form allows. So we'll go with that four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we'll do ten more on each. And then I am going to do a plank to downward dog again for a little bit of calf mobility. And then we'll just do bridges open up the front, activate glutes, and then we'll be done. Obviously, balance here. So if you have something to hold on to, can be very, very helpful. If this isn't there for you, then maybe it's just not there. But closer to the wall, definitely, again, just even some tactile from your fingertips goes a long, can go a long way. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I will, I do want to say also that you're getting hip flexor, but then the position that your foot is in, how your toes um, bend there, you are going to stretch, get a little bit of a toe uh, stretch there also, which again, plantar fascia can get tight if you've, you know, been playing, you know, even just getting into a running program, you've done more running or, you know, you're up, your sports getting into it and you've done a lot more activity, plantar fascia tends to get tight, roll out the bottom of your foot. Again, that stretch is good because they can kind of get a little bit of length plus you're moving through it, so you're getting some blood flow there too. All right, I'm gonna do plank to downward dog. We'll just do five so you get the idea. So core is engaged, don't arch your back. Go up into that downward dog, you can kind of bend one knee, feel a stretch more on the one side. Two, three, four, five, six, so that was three on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll do the first three with the pedal and the last two without. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll just hold both. Bridges, just 20 bridges again. Open up hip, activate glutes. Make sure we're ending with those turned on. Core's engaged, back flat, press through your heels, core and glutes. One, I'm not going to go all the way down. If you need to go down, definitely do so. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take the break if you need to. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So there's some ideas for um, single leg uh, strengthening, some dorsiflexion ideas, both really important for running, sports, um, 
get, make sure you have the right muscles turned on for get more power. Um, any questions, let me know and have a good day.